so I, I had a time and a place. I mean, I, like I said, I, I, a lot of people know this, but I, I moved out when I was 15. You know, I was, I was, I considered myself pregnant well before my time in that respect. Very huge responsibility. I felt the only way to, to take care of my responsibility um, and my love and our relationship was to go out into the world and earn money. Um, and so I went and did that. Um, but leading up to that point, before that major point in my life, I had libraries. I had a little bit of access to computers, but I didn't have people around me that like computers were complicated. Like, so I got to, you know, I, I programmed in basic a little bit and I played around, but I didn't have other people to help enable. Like I was interested, but you know, when you're the only person interested in something and you have a hard time getting information. Um, and that was the thing. Information was scarce, right? Like, I not only on a technological front, but I also had, I had these burning questions. You know, I was, I was forced to go to Sunday school. Um, to, you know, I was like the, the good Christian thing to do, right. It was make sure that your kid got some Sunday school. And so, and I was like, okay, these, these stories, while they're interesting, um, in a lot of ways, um, I just can't, I, I was never taken at face value person. I, I grew up very, as a kid, I was an adult and now as an adult, I have more kid like, right. Um, so I, I found myself questioning a lot of things all the time um, and questioning religion. Um, and I even had rational thoughts about like, well, uh, while, while I don't want to have 100% faith, it could be that it's all just a sham. Like, could be, you know, I mean, but I, I think there are lots of wonderful things. That's a different discussion. But the point being is just based on information alone, right? Like you had to go to a library. You had to have access. You had to know how to look up books and you had to hopefully find books and a lot of times books provided lots of information, but going through a book was so stale and stuffy. You're like, let me read all this stuff. Like no one's like, let me learn about biology and like open up their biology book. And like, there are parts that are interesting. Right. Um, but I, I also got struck by like theology and had people around me that weren't willing to have philosophical conversations. Right. Like the, I, I very early on in, in my life was like, well, if religion isn't a thing, if it's not really true in creation and this and science is its thing, right? Because I, you can hold more than one concept in your brain. You don't have to be all of one or the other. Then where did we come from? Why are we here? How did we start? You know, what, what's, what's the meaning of life in this respect? What do people want to do with their lives? What does it mean to have thousands of years of history? What have we learned from that? And I would walk around and I'd have these conversations, I'd try to have these conversations with my stepmother, father, friends. And uh, I was in a very, very lonely group of people because um, there weren't a lot of people like me wanting to have conversations. You know, like the conversations take effort. They, they get you out of your comfort zone. They ask you to think about things differently in your life or to think about new concepts that are hard to think about. And you know, we all go through, I think we all go through as children, we go through these stages where we discover something and we get really excited about that thing. And it, it progresses. I think it's a little less so unless you preserve that in life, but the ability to be a hundred percent, just be full on passionate about something and then to learn because of that passion and to go deeper. Those are the real moments that, progress people forward. Right. And when I was young, it was much harder to reach that nowadays. You, if you have an idea, if you have an interest, you can find people that have those ideas and interests. Um, they're all out there. They're all around us. The world is so much smaller because of technology and the internet and the way we think about information. And even, I mean, the way that we've reappropriated, I mean, look, we're, we're here having a, a real time conversation, a one to many, right. Um, and we're doing that together. And these weren't things I grew up with. Um, and I think for better or worse, I think that overall we have so much more opportunity for people to become more from nothing than they ever were because they have these tools. They have YouTube, they have tutorials, they have, they can go almost as deep as they want. It's just about their curiosity now and giving them the opportunity to have that curiosity satisfied, that passion that then drives them to learn more and to develop. Um, and it's a tough, it's a, it's a tough thing, you know, and I really appreciate that, that, that we've had this in, in our lives. We've, we've had a revolution. And then I think that these are like the fundamental blocks that change 
the idea of society that changed the way the world works. And eventually we'll all be connected in that respect, you know? And I mean, even the global conversation that we're able to have now because of things like Twitter, you know, and I'm not out there tweeting my butt off all the time, you know, like I'm not following it. Um, I watched this fantastic TED talk. I'll post it at, in the discord at some point, but it's about how Twitter's trying to change and be responsible for that global conversation. And one of their, their mantras um, and what they're trying to, to change the company is they're trying to change the quality of the conversation that can be had on Twitter. And, you know, for Twitter, a lot of people have very deep connections and have meaningful dialogue and information. But there's also just a chunk of Twitter, which is a megaphone of just garbage, you know, and, and bullshit and negativity and sometimes misinformation and evil, all kinds of shit, right? Like just it's it's the cesspool that ha humanity sometimes gets into, right? And it can be funny and ha ha and, you know, whatnot. But it's also something that if that's the way you have larger conversations at scale and you allow that to continue to happen, the world doesn't benefit as much from having the ability to do that than they would before. I don't know. Thought I would. Here's my soapbox. My soapbox.